Hi, welcome to what's happening here at the top five stories. At number one, the federal government called a meeting on Sunday to discuss the removal of fuel subsidies and the resulting increase in fuel prices. However, the Nigeria Labour Congress did not attend the meeting. The union refused to engage in any discussions with government officials unless a valid team was established. The electricity workers have pledged to participate in a protest against the Bola Tinubu administration's decision to remove fuel subsidy, which could result in a nationwide blackout. Hakim Ambali, the national treasurer of the NLC, has confirmed that the union decided to boycott the meeting that followed Wednesday's meeting about the removal of subsidy. At number two, the Ohaneze Ndibo Youth Council Worldwide is supporting the Enugu state government's effort to put an end to the sitter home protest starting from June 5th. The Ohaneze Ndibo Youth Council Worldwide supports the Enugu state government's effort to stop the sitter home order from Monday, June 5th, 2023. The Enugu state government has directed all government agencies, businesses and educational institutions to resume activities on the same day. The national president of Ohaneze Ndibo Youth Council Worldwide, Mazi Oku, Nabui K released a statement on Sunday night condemning individuals who are attempting to destroy Ibu land by infiltrating the Biafra agitation. At number three, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency found 76.9 kilograms of synthetic cannabis called Canadian Loud in four used vehicles inside a container from Canada at the Port Harcourt Port complex in River State. The drugs were seized during a joint inspection with the Nigeria Customs Service after a request for 100% examination due to previous intelligence. Two suspects were arrested in different locations, one with 6.4 kg of a psychoactive substance and the other with various drugs. At number four, foreign airlines are unable to assess $812.2 million in Nigeria, which has increased by 47% compared to last year. The International Air Transport Association has issued a warning about the negative impact this could have on airline connectivity in affected markets. This is making it difficult for airlines to maintain the crucial connectivity that drives global economic activity and job growth. The Director General of IATA, Willie Walsh, is urging governments to work with industry players to help airlines in markets where they are unable to recover their commercial revenues, which is necessary to maintain economic growth and job creation. At number five, on Sunday, Shay Makinde, the governor of Oyo State, appointed Uluwa Tomiwa Omolewa, who was previously the secretary of the disbanded park management system, as the new chairman of PMS. The governor has instructed that the parks be opened again after they were closed due to the PMS disciplinary committee being dissolved. The governor has also appointed Kasali Lawal as the new PMS secretary. The appointment was part of the state government's reorganization of the PMS and the new management team includes members from various factions in the transport union. That's all for now. See you next time on What's Happening.